Hi everybody, this is a game from round one of the Isle of Man chess tournament. Uh, this game is between um, former FIDE world champion, I think the first FIDE world champion when they started holding those knockout tournaments around 99, 98, 99, 2000. It's a long time ago. Um, but this is uh, Rustam um, Kazimjanov with the white pieces. Haven't seen him in a while, so I'm glad to be going over this game. And with the black pieces is I am, um, I think it's Wilma uh, Rudolph. And uh, I forgot her nickname, chess.com, either Miss Tactics or Miss Strategy. I can't remember which which one it is, but she does some uh, videos um, that I enjoy on the uh, chess.com uh, channel with uh, Jan Gustafson from time to time. So here is uh, uh, Rudolph, uh, I am, again, with the black pieces against Rustam. Kazim Zhanov, very strong grandmaster. So d4, d5, c4. I put in the pressure on early. The correct move against d5. e6, so have this queen's gambit declined. Knight c3 and bishop e7. This is a move you see often um, when players want to avoid the, uh, the exchange variation proper. For example, after knight f6, you get this e, c takes d5, e takes d5, and bishop g5 with this pressure. And of course, black is not lost or anything, but some players do not like to go into this position. So therefore, players like uh, Rudolph in this game and uh, Levon Aronian play the move bishop e7, whereby bishop g5 is prevented. So what happens is when white wants to play the exchange anyway, c takes d5, e takes d5, and then bishop f4 is played instead of the bishop being on g5. And you get kind of uh, analogous positions to queen's gambit decline in the Steinitz variation. He used to play bishop f4. But as you see in this game, there is poison in this variation also is white. So c6 is played. e3. And already black should be on guard. Uh, because notice that um, white has not developed his knight. So why would he be holding his knight back from the natural square f3? So these are the type, the type of things you have to think about when organizing your play early in the game. All right, just don't play by rote or memory, but try to understand what's going on here, what, what the options are in the position. So this move E3, the F pawn is still able to move. And if you know anything about the exchange variation, there's several variations where the bishop will come here to D3, this knight will come to E2, pawn will go to F3, and white will play for E4. Other plan in the exchange variation, of course, famous plan is rook b1 with the idea b4, b5, exchanging on c6, transferring the base of the pawn structure from the 7th rank to the 6th rank, and then piling up on this weakness here on c6, and at the same time controlling the c5 square. So there's different plans. <clears throat> Kazim Janov chooses an aggressive plan, however, which he should against a player uh, that's about 350 points uh, lower in rating. He plays e3, and now bishop d6, so she goes for this immediate trade. Again, uh, there's a little bit of a red flag for me moving this bishop um, again in the, in the opening like that. You know, it seems like a, a sort of a waste of time, and it uh, and I can't see how Black benefits if if Bishop takes d6. There's a little time gain by Black as the Queen is developed, but then there's um you know this is sort of a strategic concession. Is um this is an important um, piece for Black in these openings defensively, and also White gains time in the position. 
you know so regardless if um i i just think maybe a move like bishop f5 or something might have been better but bishop d6 bishop takes d6 and again so there's a gain of time right here so we see these two minor pieces out no minor pieces out for black now knight e7 okay so why not knight f6 well seems like black is opting for this trade you know trade policy and is eager to get toward the end game figuring that it might be safer there queen c2 so preventing the further <coughs> trade of pieces on f5 here g6 white is going to do it anyway excuse me black is going to do it anyway f3 and there it is the idea i told you before notice again when i asked you the question why was white holding back the knight on f3 well there's uh holding back the knight on g1 so there's your answer because uh, Kazim Zhanov wanted to use the F3 point as support for the E4 events. Castles. And of course, with this plan that uh, Black has adopted, which is which is a common plan in uh, similar positions in the exchange variation, um, notice that the downside is there's some weakness around the dark squares. The bishop is gone. All right. So white comes up with this plan of, of exploiting that, all right, attacking. And black hopes to uh, be able to trade off enough pieces where it's not going to be a major weakness in the position. If black can trade off everything and get to an end game, black has a nice pawn structure, an easy, easy going game, all right? But let's see. Castle's queen side. All right, and with these weaknesses that I've sp spoken about, we can see why um, White would like to choose an aggressive plan. E4 is on the table, H4, H5, just cracking open the position on you know, Knight G, E2, G4, etc. B5. So now Black decides to play. On this side of the board, figuring the black king, the white king is over there. I'm not so sure about this move. Um, a lot of pieces on the back rank, and striking out like that, I'm not sure if that's the way to go. But b5 is a natural move in in these type of positions to try to you know create this counterplay on the other side of the board but it still seems like it's to me it seems like maybe peace peace movement is better um problem with this move is this e4 so it kind of refutes black's idea early in the opening with g6 and knight e7 because if you can't if you can't carry out the plan then it, it looks, looks like, you know, some wasted wasted moves here. Perhaps, move like knight a6. Real provocative move. Aiming to take a piece from the support of e4. So, for example, bishop takes a6. This is a dynamic continuation. And now you have this weakness here, but now you have this b file open. Okay. So, for instance, after knight g2, g e, knight g e2, and rook b8. And I think he has some dynamic uh, counter chances for black here. So b5 is played, knight g e2, b4. And now we see this weakness cropping up on the c file. And it's funny, another game I analyzed, the Nigel Short game. You see the same weakness uh, from black on the uh, c5 square. So squares are very important. B6. 
Bishop a6. So we again we see this policy of trading off. So now we see the um, idea from Black. Black realized, hey, I can't play Bishop f5 and trade it off, so I'll do it this way. However, with this additional um, uh, weakness created now, now the idea of trading off everything and going to the in an end game is not so clear and cut. No, not, bleh, not so clear cut for Black. Before a few moves ago, when Black had you know a darn near perfect pawn structure, I said, hey, if he could, if she could trade off everything in the position, you know the pieces, and then she would have a good end game. But now with this b4, b5, b4 move, weakness on the c5 square is not. It's not like that, you know. Um, I prefer uh, white's chances. Let's see what happened. Knight f4. Bishop b5 now wisely not taken here. This would just help. This this move would just... Um, Bishop takes here and perhaps Kazim Zhanov could, could play queen here. Right? Keeps the knight out of here, but there's these options also. Looking at all these these dark squares, and again I highlight the absence of the dark square bishop. So Rudolph just pauses. Bishop b5, but again it doesn't. That move does absolutely nothing. Um, to me the idea of uh, some type of full scale queen side attack is just a fantasy. Um, Black is not going to be able to make this happen. Queen c5, attacking the queen. And this is a good move psychologically because, um, like I said earlier, black seemed to be adopting this policy of just kind of trading off everything and going to the end game. However, the dynamics in the position have changed and the end game is now favor favorable for white. But black might be playing on inertia and saying, hey, I got my chance to go into the end game. But now instead of going into the good end game, Black opts to go into a suspect endgame. This endgame is clearly better for white here. Look at this beautiful uh, square. Perhaps um, black thinks that she'll just be able to trade off this knight or whatever. But look at these pawns. There's no way um, you know anybody in their right mind is going to allow this to um, you know not be exploited. Let's see what happens. So bishop takes d3, more trades. Rook, uh, rook takes d3. I must admit that knight f takes d3 is just more natural looking. It just looks right. You're hitting this pawn. Of course, a5 can happen, but still, this to me, this this looks like the way to go. However, as Led Zeppelin said, in Stairway to Heaven, there are two paths that you can go by. And the other one is rook takes d3. So rook takes d3 happens. a5. King d2. Knight a6. Of course rook c1. You are not going to allow black to trade here. And then you have to take with the pawn. But you're going to bring another piece here. And attack here. <laughs> Rook F B eight and there's E four and Black's position is getting more and more precarious. So now knight C seven right fortifying this uh D five point E five and for now black is defending however Again, as I pointed out in the Nigel short game, is black has no counterplay. And I, I think that's a theme that needs to be stressed. Um, I guess I, I know my coach, uh, you know, a lot of times, like we always talk about, you know, when, when I discuss games with my coach, we always talk about play being two-sided. Like, especially if you have the black pieces, you want... Even if sometimes you might have to sacrifice a pawn or or play positions, you know, 
with with isolated pawn or double pawn. You always want to have two. You want to have a chance in the game. You want to have a, a situation where you can put pressure on your opponent, or at least have some type of counter chances that he has to think about. Like he might be attacking and doing something, but you have to get you have to give him something to think about. If you don't give your opponent anything to think about, he just con he just continues with his plan, and you're just kind of slowly getting crushed. And that's what you see here. Is Black lost here? No. But look at the position. Where's Black's counter? Where's Black's counter chances coming from? Right. So since Black has no counter play, this means that White can just sit, set up an ideal position. Keep improving his pieces, and the guy's 2,700, so he's gonna he's gonna improve the pieces. He's gonna find the ideal squares, and just break through, and then that's that's gonna be it. So you want to avoid those type you know, type of positions. G4, right? Just restrict restricting the pieces. There's no no knight coming there, taking space. A6. H4, more space. Just confining um, black to the realm of passivity. H5. Rook A7. Takes, takes. Now, you have a, a clear pass pawn. Oops, excuse me. You have a clear pass pawn now. So now black has to worry about this pass pawn as well as keeping this protected. And you see how the weaknesses are just popping up on the board. And now the pawns marching forward. H5, this is a mistake. Um, again, what else can Black really do? But he's not, or she's not in a position really to be trying to strike out at all. For instance, this can't even be taken because of the situation, you know, this rook being, um, you know, under the pin. So the only thing that uh, she has to be thinking here is trying to create a passer here. But even if she was able to create the passer, there's no way to really put back it up or protect it with anything. So f5 is played. Another strong move here would just be rook, uh, rook d h3. You know, and there's really no there's no defense, <laughs> no defense against uh, uh, g takes h5. F5, g takes, g takes. So now you see the two passers. H4 and so rook f3. Just to protect this pawn from the knight. Rook A, A8. F6. Just push it forward to the advantage. Everything is protected. And again, this is no counterplay from black. Okay, now rook takes um, g6, threaten. So now the check is played. So for instance, now if rook takes g6, king takes g6, knight f4 check, king g5 takes, and black could have resigned right here. Uh, but Kazim Janov chose another way. Again, there was like different ways that, um, you know, the game could have been won. And after E6, um, uh, Rudolph uh, resigned. Um, Black is just dead busted in this position. Again, here's an example of just no counter, just no counter play. Um, just right from the opening. Um, just a just a bit too passive on Black's part, and I I think it started too with this move right here, just moving the piece again, and um, also this idea which didn't quite work out, 
this idea of knight here and hoping to play this move it just didn't just didn't work out tactically bishops exchange we had this weakness here to start off with and then this move right here fatally weakened the square you always have to be careful about weakening the squares because <clears throat> what's funny about this is black initiated this attack on the queen side with no no like peace development so that's a red flag right there in, uh, in the first place even though black had an option of attacking on the king's side black chose not to black just simply exploited the weaknesses that black uh, left behind very nice game by Kazim Janov just real simple chess here and black again is already strategically in hot water when I actually saw this position live I just knew that it was just a matter of time it's just you can't you, you know these positions where you have these static weaknesses with no kind of play white grand strong grandmaster is very hard to you know come up with any type of you know resistance because you can't you can't get these guys like this real simple straightforward stuff like this it's just too easy just too easy to uh you know play these positions you know and he just um you know just exploited everything pushed you know and, and and what's interesting too is how black excuse me how white although there was some um tactical shots in the position white basically stuck to his his early game plan of pushing these central pawns using f3 and then e4 etc and so although black created some um additional features by weakening the c5 square in the end, black wind up winning by pushing those central pawns, which is a major um, theme in the Queen's Gambit exchange variation in the uh, F3 line. So again, I hope you enjoyed that video, and um, you know, please like and subscribe, and um, I'll see you on the next one.